Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom and I'm today going to be talking about what is a TMA. I'm going to be talking about what it stands for, what type of questions you get, how it plays a part in your assessment for your modules and yeah, just general information that you should know about them. In today's video, unlike other videos, I'm actually signed up on a module so I can actually go through the website now and show you how to get to your TMAs, how to see how often they are. Um, yeah, it's just a lot more helpful. I realized when I did an ICMA and I was talking about um, just how they worked and also when I did the um, online tutorial video, I realized I couldn't actually go into the software and show you it. I can do that all now for TMAs anyway because I'm actually signed up on a module now. So I will take you over to the website soon and yeah, we'll go through it then. But first off, a quick note on what a TMA is. TMA stands for Tutor Marked Assignments. I think previously I might have said assessments, it's actually assignments are very, very similar. But, um, they are the most common form of assignment of assessments in open university modules. No matter what module you do, as far as I know anyway, you will have at least one or two TMAs. Um, they can be submitted online or via paper if you don't have internet. Although if you have internet, if you don't have internet, you might struggle with open university in general anyway. But I guess some people prefer handwriting it. So the option is there if you want to, you can handwrite it. But obviously for something electronically, um, you can just type it up on Word. And then for paper, you can just handwrite it. Although it must be said that obviously depending on what module you do, um, you might have some sort of practical aspect that might need a computer. Um, so you might just be better off doing it all electronically because you might have to do practical anyway. And a practical, obviously you have to submit it online regardless so there's that to think about. TMAs usually have a range of written and practical questions as I previously said. If your module has some sort of practical aspect TMAs are usually split 50-50 between written and practical um, which is quite helpful if you are struggling with the practical aspects you can obviously bump up your marks with a good written one or if you're someone who doesn't who tend to not who tends to not be able to put the words right into writing and answer questions correctly, you usually can pump yourself up with a practical aspect. Um, so it does work either way. Obviously, you'd be better off if you do good in both. Um, but I know sometimes when I've come a, struggled with the practical sometimes, or not quite got it as well done as I wanted, I've been able to boost up my marks with the written, because I've been able to concentrate more on the written aspect. So that is obviously a plus point. The written questions are a mixture of different types of questions. You can get your typical one mark, two mark, three mark questions where you just basically write a couple of lines. It might just be explain what this is um, and then you write a couple of lines about it. And then you can obviously get your bigger marked questions which might be like 12 marks questions where you have to go into a deep dive into what something is, maybe compare it against something else, um, write about which one you would support and which one would you advise other people to use. Obviously, it all depends on what type of module you're doing. Um, I do a lot of computing and IT one because that's my degree is computing and IT. Um, so when I did a networking module, did a Cisco, uh, I had to talk about what the difference between RIP V1 is and RIP V2 is. And I think that was like a six marker or something. Um, but that, that, that gives you a general idea that if depending on what module you're doing, you get a full range of different questions. TMAs are typically an as for as long as I knew, I thought they were all out of 100 marks. Although this year I've got a module, of course which one is. I've got two modules I'm doing this year and I think it's M250. Anyway, um, the first TMA is actually only out of 20 marks because the rest of the marks are in the second TMA. But as far as I knew, all TMAs were out of 100 marks. Um, apparently not. I don't know. But uh, usually they're out of 100 marks anyway. And I believe, I haven't checked this, I probably should have, but... I believe you need 40 marks to pass. So you only need 40% to pass, which is, is good. Obviously it's low score. Try to get higher, of course. Um, but yeah, you only need 40% to actually effectively pass a TMA. TMAs do all count together towards your end overall grade. Um, sometimes, it depends on how your module is. Sometimes the TMAs will mark up 50% of your grade and then you'll have an exam, which will be the other 50%. Uh, which is a lot like the MST124 one, uh, which is a common maths module. Or it might just be, I'm pretty sure EMAs count for 50% as well. So usually they all add up and add up to like a good 50, maybe 60% of your overall mark. So the number of TMAs that you would typically have, 
does differ on what type of modules you are. Um, I've had modules where there's only two TMAs. I've had modules that have had four TMAs. Um, it, ultimately, from what I can see, it comes down to how your module is split up. Um, some of my first year modules were split into three different topics. So I had a TMA for each topic. Um, maths, MMST124, had four different books and it had four different TMAs as far as I can remember. Uh, I've got a team. I've got um, two modules I'm doing this year. I've all got three different books, three different TMAs. So yeah, and I've had one TMA that had only had two TMAs because it was that was the Cisco one as well. It was basically split into two different halves. Um, so that's why you got two different TMAs. Um, so yeah, don't worry if one T one module has like several TMAs. It doesn't mean that module is harder. Uh, it just means that that module is more split up into different aspects, and honestly, having more TMAs can be helpful because if you if you are struggling with one TMA, you might do a lot better with the next TMA. So you can kind of even out your points that way. Um, although it can seem quite annoying having several TMAs in one year, it can be a plus point basically. So now that, that I've explained what a TMA is, I'm just going to take you over to the website now, and I will show you how to get to your TMAs. Um, and how to, I might show a very quick look at what a TMA looks like. Probably shouldn't because Open University might not be best pleased. But anyway, so uh, I don't know how much of this website will be shown because there is the odd bit of personal information scattered about. So if I see, if you see a random block, <laughs> a square on the on the page, just know it is just blocking out my like, personal like email or something like that. So, um, which I, I I'm guessing you all fully understand and respect why I want to keep that covered. So, as you can see, I'm doing TM354 Software Engineering this year. This is the type of list that you will get. And then there's basically online TMA and EMA service there. For every module, you will have a dummy TMA. Um, that dummy TMA is basically a blank piece of paper often. Or sometimes the tutor might ask you to send in, like, Explain who you are so the team so the tutor can find out a bit more about you. Um see if you might struggle, you might ask a couple of questions there and then they can respond to you. Basically so you get used to what the assignment is like. What uh, handing an assignment is like. Obviously I didn't do it this year because I've done it several times. It doesn't count for anything. It like I say it's just a dummy TMA, it doesn't have any points to it. Do it if you want to, if you're not, then don't bother. As you can see assigned next to all these TMAs, there is this submit via paper. Um, I've never done that. I've always done it electronically. Um, but as far as I know, you get um, a piece of paper that you have to sign in and fill in lots of details every time you send off a TMA. And I think you send off a TMA directly to your uh, your tutor, as far as I remember. The only issue is with EMAs, which you can't see on this one because this module doesn't have an EMA. I don't think EMAs can be done via paper, um, as far as I know, because they don't. They're not actually. They're not actually marked by your tutor, they're marked by someone else as like a, a secondary person. So I don't think you can hand in the EMA via paper, as far as I remember. So you'd go, let's just go for this submit dummy one. So you would obviously click on that submit and it will take you through when my internet catches up. So you take into this page, you got your select your file and then you would click on that, obviously click your file. If you have more than one file, because obviously, like I say, you might have a practical aspect. Um, so you might need a file from like, say you've, I don't know, say you built a website, which is what I did last year, a very basic website, but I built a website. Um, obviously I need all my HTML and my CSS files, all that needs handed in at the same time, as well as my Word document. Basically put all that into a folder and you zip up the folder. Um, and then you, when you go into the choose file, you just select that zipped up folder. Um, don't worry if you don't know how to zip up a folder, it will be fully explained to you when you come to get it. It's, it's very straightforward. Uh, but you, like I said, you put everything into a folder, you right click your folder and it says center, and then you can send it to zip and it will just zip up the folder. All it does is it compresses it a tiny little bit and it basically acts like a file. So you, when you choose the file, you can just select that folder and then when the tutor gets it, they'll unzip everything, they'll have all your different files, um, a new Word document, etc. And then you have a couple of 
a couple of ticking off saying you've read you've read and acknowledged the above statements they're all about making sure it's your own work make sure you haven't copied anything make sure you've submitted the right one um and then step three is make your submission basically um when you submit a, when you submit an assessment or a tma before the cutoff date you can submit more but you cannot necessarily expect your tutor to mark your new one um because a lot of tutors will basically mark them as they come in because obviously they're going to get a lot of people that are in on, on the day it's due but so the ones that come in early they want to try and get it done and get out of the way which i fully get so, but you can send in another one if like you've rethought something you something's occurred to you and you've explained something wrong and go into it and submit another one my best bet if you, the best bet is if you want to do that contact your tutor via email uh, and just say i've realized i messed up on the questions can i send in a new one and they probably will no problems you know all the tutors seem very good with letting you have letting you send in another one i sent one in last year actually um for one of my tmas instead of sending it was the second tma of the year for that module but instead of sending in that second tma i sent in the first one again i don't know how i messed that up but the tutor was like tom i'm pretty sure you've sent in the first one um by mistake and it was like past the due day i, I sent it on on the day it was due and it was, it was like a week later and he was like i'm pretty sure you've sent in the wrong one i was like what do you mean <laughs> and i went through and i realized yes i sent in the first one again like a fool but it, like i say it was super nice and was like yeah just make sure you send in another one there'll be no points deducted um so yeah usually if you send in one late usually we'll get some sort of point deduction um, for sending a TMA late, unless you've previously contacted a, your tutor and asked for an extension, um, then usually I haven't asked for an extension apart from that one time where I sent in the wrong one by mistake. Um, so I don't know how often. I, I'm guessing they would be quite lenient with it and let you as long as you let them know in due time, not just like the date it was due. Then I ain't been able to get it done. Can I have like an extra few days? Um, but yeah usually pretty good with it my only issue with it is i would say don't get into the hang of asking for extensions because a if you have an extension if you ask for an extension every tma your tutor probably would eventually be like no stop doing this but also the ema if you have an ema that can't have an extension so if you say you've got three tmas and the third tma you're handing a week late you've essentially got a week less to work on your ema um and your EMA is worth more points and stuff so ultimately i would say try to always hand it in on time if you push comes shove and you're in a bit of a pickle and you need an extension try to let you stop hitting that try to let you tutor know sooner rather than later um that you need an extension and you're pretty good with it yeah that's how you would go through that and that's pretty much and that's the same sort of process for emas as well it's the exact same thing where you just pick your file Say it's yours, then you ain't cheated, you ain't copied anything, and then send it in. Pretty straightforward. Obviously, this tells you the cutoff dates, and then um, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna quick look at what a TMA usually is. Um, basically, this was what a TMA would look like. Um, you would have your introduction, and then your different types of questions. Um, quick maths. Yes, it adds up to 100 marks awesome see usually does that usually does add for 100 marks it was just that one of the tma that for some reason is only worth 20 marks um it goes through and tells you that it must be a dot doc rtf or dot docs file so if you usually write well your word documents in a different file type, make sure you can export it to dot doc dot rtf or dot docs okay i think my um web my camera is actually completely full i think because i can't extend it so apologies but well luckily i'm capturing my screen so hey ho anyway so like LibreOffice, usually can ex can um produce a save file in this format that might be a, a little better for you um but yeah it'll go through it'll tell you the description tell you which units it's based off of um uh, tmh you are supposed to do it with your books so don't treat it as if it's a type of exam or anything of course you can do it in your own time take as long as you need just make sure you get it done in time it tells you the mark allocation so that's 33 percent of my continuous assessment score for this module 
Um, some team, some teammates are they're not split evenly. So if you have got three teammates, they aren't necessarily a third each. Um, so just make sure you double check. But like I say, if you work, you, but you need about forty percent, I think. Then obviously you go to like these questions and these basic questions like in Activity Five Point One, you listen to the interview, blah blah. Fill the question we refer to recording. Based on this section of interview, in just three ways why the Robertson's requirements is still important in the agile world of software development. There's very standard questions if you're used to like school assessments and college assessments and stuff like that. I'm not going to show any more because I don't want to risk getting in trouble <laughs> with Open University. So, yeah, that's how a TMA looks like. Obviously, um, you would just do this on a Word document as well. You would just type out the answers. But yeah, if you've got any questions about what a TMA is, um, put in the put in the description below for me, and I will answer them. Or you can inbox me, DM me, or whatever on social media, sort of Twitter or Instagram is where I'm most active. I've changed my Instagram settings, so if you do send me one, even if I don't follow you back, I should still get the notification. Plus, I've changed the settings for that. I realised that I made it so I can't get notifications for it, like a silly person I am. I'll change that anyway. All social media links are in the description. Um, and thank you for watching. I hope you like, maybe subscribe for more, and I will see you all in the next one in a bit.